Hi everybody, this is Jose Manuel Guillén, Yaltes Sales Manager, and I'm with all of you today in one of our webinars. Uh, thank you very much for coming and to uh, attend to this webinar. Uh, we really hope that it will be very useful for you using Yaltes. Uh, today, the webinar has a structure of uh, three different parts. Uh, the first part has to do with software. I'm going to give you some tips and tricks with the software uh, regarding with installation, regarding with common problems during the installation, how to solve them. Um, also, if we have to install another language pack, uh, not only English, but also another one that like could be German or could be uh, whatever, another one, French, Italian. Uh, it's possible with Yaltes, and I will show you how to how to do it in case you need it. Okay, the rest part uh, has to do with the practical part of this um, tractor that I have to do. I have uh, in the in my in my back, and um, I, we are going to divide uh, this practical part into um, into other parts. Uh, we are going to try to perform diagnosis in the CAN lines of the diagnostic connector. In the past webinar, we see that uh, sometimes could be a little bit problematic, uh, the diagnosis connector and the CAN lines communication. And also, I would like to introduce you how to perform diagnosis correctly in a Deutschfahr uh, agricultural machine, in this case, a tractor. We are going to see that uh, this brand and these kind of models are a little bit um, interesting, I will say interesting, and is not uh, very intuitive at the very beginning, the first times we uh, start to connect with Yaltes. But we will see uh, with these webinars how to do it and how to do it correctly, and how Yaltes is a super powerful diagnosis tool and uh, really can perform very accurate diagnosis in, in this kind of uh, models and, and Deutschfahr uh, brand. Also, I will take the opportunity. Uh, we are going to release next month, more or less, uh, the version 20.3. And um, uh, as, you, as you know, we have three different versions during the year. It's really worth of time to update your diagnosis equipment. Uh, it's always full of new things. But not only diagnosis um, diagnosis functions, like could be uh, system checks, actuations, calibrations, parameters, but also very useful technical information like uh, wiring diagrams, like technical data with pictures, with uh, values for the components, uh, with new procedures, with new troubleshooting guides. Uh, it's full of information, technical releases. So please, uh, always, if you have the chance and you have uh, a little of uh, internet connection, take the opportunity and please update to the next version. It's really worth of time. Um, so that's it. Let's proceed with the, with the first uh, part of the webinar and hope you enjoy it. Okay, guys, so now I'm going to start with the software part of this webinar. We've got here a screenshot and I'm going to show you how to perform minor updates in Yaltes. Sometimes when we start Yaltes, a message like this one appears in the main screen at the very beginning. So you have the option to click in the hyperlink and to download the last minor update. If not, at the bottom of the main screen or if not also the help menu about Yaltes, checking for new arrival updates and here we're going to see that the current version is 202 and we have another one available 204. If I click in accept, I will download the folders and then after clicking a couple of times in accept button, we are going to install this minor update. Now start again the test and following the same path, the same previous path, by using the help menu about the Altes, we are going to see the current version now is 204 and there are no more new available versions. I would like to show you also how to install a language packet. Normally we have five files. 
this is an install button. If we want to install one uh, language packet, we need to ask our distributor or download from our customer area. Put the file inside the main file. So now we have a total amount of seven files. Click in install. We've got here Italian and German. Normally by default, we have English and Spanish. So in the first window, yes, in this first window, we are going to have also the options for German and Italian. And that's it. Okay, guys, I really hope that the tips and tricks regarding with the software has been useful for all of you. I can see some questions uh, regarding the tractor that it's right now at my back. And we are going to proceed with um, a practical session uh, with this Deutschfar 5100.4D. Uh, for the ones who are right now asking about construction machinery, don't worry, as I told you in the previous webinars, we're going to have uh, in the next months uh, webinars regarding with the construction machinery. So just uh, give back a couple of weeks and you will have a construction machinery um, webinar as well. Um, okay, first thing regarding with uh, the, practical, the practical part, uh, I would like to tell you uh, what happens with these kind of tractors when we are going to perform diagnosis uh, mostly the first times, okay? This is a Deutschfar, and as I told you, uh, it's a 5100.4D. And now, what I'm going to do is to try to locate this specific model in Jaltes. So, first, what I'm going to do is to connect with YAL test. I only have right now my laptop and my diagnostic device connected by USB. I always connect my YAL, uh, my YAL test link, the hardware, by USB because even if I don't have the vehicle itself, I got access to the technical uh, information of every vehicle. So I always do this. And the first thing is, Search by brand. This is an agricultural vehicle and comes from Deutschfar. And the next thing is to search among all the families, all the families of the models in this brand. It is divided by series. We've got five series, six series, seven series, nine series, AgroFarm, AgroKid, AgroPlus, AgroPrima. Okay, many of them. And we are not going to find the specific model with the numbers 5100.4D. I'm going to tell you how to do it. The first thing is how to define the number of the series. It comes defined by the first number that appears here. Okay, so this is a five series. And the next thing is to try to locate if we have any letter. In this case, we do. It's letter D, like David. So, I see here 5D series. This specific model is inside the 5D series family. Don't freak out if you find that Jaltes has not the specific model. It's inside one family. It happens quite often, not only in agricultural vehicles, also in construction machinery it happens quite often. Um, it's because most of the electronic control units are share are the same in the same uh, family of vehicles. So we put all together in one family and therefore it's easier. But at the very beginning can be a little bit confused, but in the end it's easier and faster. Now we've got here all the possible systems inside this vehicle. Those are the possible systems. Now I need to realize which of these systems are indeed in this vehicle installed. And to do this, the only way is connecting our Jaltes link with the tractor. If I come into the tractor, you can follow me and you will see by yourself. Please come in. I'm going to use the other door. Okay. 
if I come into the tractor, the first thing I will realize is that it is not very easy to find the diagnostic connector. I can try by myself. I can try to locate it maybe somewhere, somewhere here, somewhere there. Not here, just a couple of papers. Not here, just a couple of pens and some of the things. So the connector is is not here. I, I have I, I don't know where it is. No problem. Let's go to Yaltes and let's try to locate using the location pictures. The first thing is select one system. I don't care. I will select, for instance, the engine. Engine is always in the tractor. So I'm going to select the engine and I'm going to select connectors. And here, the first pictures, we have a nice overview where the connector is located. As I can see, it's an OBD plug, an OBD socket. And my cable is called JDC 200. 13.9, which is the most generic diagnostic cable for all the vehicles, commercial vehicles, construction machinery, and also agricultural vehicles. Next thing is, let's come back to the tractor and let's see if we can locate this connector and if it's in the same position as Yalte says. We've got here, just under the steering wheel, on the left, a couple of bolts. I don't even need a screwdriver. That's one. And that's still the other one. Then I remove the plastic cap. Here we've got some instructions about the fuses and relays. Those there. And under this black cap here appears the diagnostic socket which is the same place as Yaltes says. Normally when we get used to Yaltes and we get used to the first steps of diagnosis the most difficult thing we are going to face always is to find the diagnostic connector. It's difficult in agricultural machinery, but it's even more difficult in construction machinery. Trust in Yeltes. In most of the cases, we are going to have a very good location picture for the diagnostic connector. So let's take my laptop and let's see where it is. Yeah, here it is. And the next thing is connect our device and click on system scan. I'm going to pick up my connector. Here it is. This is the JDC 213.9. That's what it says here right now. You can see over there the number. It's not so difficult, just following instructions, step by step. Next, next thing is to hook our connector in our Jaltes link. And I'm going to move my trolley. Okay. Watch out, the lamp, here we are. Mm -hmm. It's already connect, and as we can see, there is a blue permanent lamp which means that at least we have correct power supply. Power supply in this type of vehicles normally is 12 volts. Uh -huh. And the next step 
is to give ignition on. There we are. That means ignition is on. And now I'm going to click in system scan. I'm going to select all, which means engine, anti-pollution and multiplexing. It takes a couple of minutes. There we are. We've got the engine system. So we can see here we have some not present errors. And the system scan has been completed. So we've got this engine system with a couple of not present errors. Don't freak out, I've been playing with the electronic control unit a couple of hours ago and that's why. And display system scan OBD. Well, looks great. I've got the engine, I've got also something called system scan or display scan. Actually, I don't know very well at the very beginning. If I am a first user, I don't know very well what's in the second system, but at least I've got the engine. Now I realize, as a technician, I realize, okay, this tractor is not so old. So we've got a digital instruments cluster. We've got also a transmission which might be have any kind of electronic control unit. Also, we've got here in the rear part of the, of the tractor, the hitch with the hydraulic lifts, the hydraulic jacks for this three-point hitch. And uh, it might have some kind of electronic control unit. And there is nothing Jaltes. At least it is not shown on the display. What's happening here? Well, at the very beginning, it seems to be a problem of the diagnostic tool Jaltes itself. But actually, it is not. Let me tell you the first important trick here with Deutschwar. Deutschwar has a very specific electronic architecture for his vehicles. Some of the vehicles has some of the systems, like the engine connecting by CAN lines through the OBD. In the second part of this practical part of this webinar, I'm going to show you where are those CAN lines. And then we have another systems, like the instruments cluster, like the hydraulic uh, lift for the rear part, and also like um, the transmission. All together in this system, which is called Display System Scan. And all of these ones, and maybe more or maybe less, are all under this specific system. So I'm going to keep this part for a couple of minutes later, and I'm going to start with the engine. Ignition is on. System scan has been correctly performed and the next step is to connect in this system. Here we are. We've got very nice diagnosis menu. Almost uh, nine different type of functions. Diagnosis, error, system data, measurement, system checks, parameters, maintenance, calibration. It is not a big tractor, but actually has a very great engine menu. Um, I would like to show you the most uh, important things of this menu, but then I will show you the second system for the instruments cluster, the gearbox, the hydraulic lift in the rear part. So in measurements, we find here a very nice system display. Normally, those for, for this kind of um, engines uses uh, electronic control unit and also um, the parts of Bosch. And what we have here is a system display of the fuel injection system coming from Bosch. And now the tractor is off, 
but uh, as we can see here we have some current values like there are some residual pressure in the injector rail and also some uh, pressure of the fuel filters and the uh, fuel tank temperature so it's very nice um, then we've got a huge measurement selection even we can configure some triggers it somehow uh, reminds me a oscilloscope because we can configure the triggers I will show you in next webinars uh, how to do it okay so in this case we have all of these measurements mm -hmm. that's very interesting system checks cylinder cutout compression test high pressure test also very nice in parameters, we can modify the injector codes, the, all the single injector codes, accelerator, we can configure it from manual to automatic, and also the maximum speed of the vehicle. That's a very, very interesting thing. Many people used to ask me about uh, these features, so I can confirm that Gialtes can do it uh, in, in this model and in many more. We will, we will discover that in many more it's a viable dispensation and also the diameter of the tire sometimes also very important to be able to modify the diameter of the tire uh, just as an example I will modify the maximum speed of the vehicle if I remember well um, it was at the, uh, I've got uh, currently 40 kilometers per hour for this vehicle I'm going to change uh, for instance to 41 or 42 um, now it's asking me for the expert um, the expert code I'm going to move a little bit the trolley in the previous webinars I talked about this expert code it's just a couple of uh, numbers and letters it's an alf alphanumeric code um, and it tells the final user in this case myself but the mechanic or uh, every person who is using Jaltes that the function that he is going to perform uh, requires a certain amount of knowledge about what 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 you are doing okay some of the some of the things that you can perform with Jaltes requires a lot of knowledge about the the vehicle the system and also about uh, diagnosis okay so this one goes That's mine. Here we are, successfully activated. And now I'm able to modify this maximum speed of the vehicle. This is just uh, an advertisement, uh, what's important to take into account. And now what I've got here is the initial conditions. Engine speed should be zero, it means only ignition on. That's what we have right now. And here we have the field and that's where I can enter the maximum speed I'm going to type 42 kilometers per hour now the maximum speed as I told you it's 40 so I'm going to click and accept can you hear this noise that means that we are modifying the parameter if everything is correct we are going to hear uh, some more noises like this one and then the process is going to be finished and the parameter is going to be correctly changed yes here i see more questions some of the people are asking also there we have the final noise some of the people are asking also if it's possible to do it in all type of agricultural vehicles this um, parameter modification it depends okay it depends on brand it depends on the model and also it depends on the construction of the tractor some of the tractors are just not able by construction to modify this parameter or at least it is not legal okay Jaltes as a uh, I will say the most powerful uh, diagnostic tool, multi brand diagnostic tool of the market, it's always accomplishing the law. So, this type of uh, parameter modification should be always done 
accomplishing the law, okay? Taking into account the construction of the vehicle. There we are. Now we have got 42 kilometers per hour as a current value uh, in the electronic control unit, okay? This is everything in the engine control unit. If we go, if you want to modify it again, we will repeat all the process and it will be done. The same with the rest of uh, parameters. Also, very nice to take into account in this diagnostic menu, maintenance. We've got the EGR exhaust gas recirculation, the system reset, just in case we've got some problems with this small valve uh, for the EGR system. Engine hours, which is for the maintenance. You can set the engine hours at you will do the maintenance in the future. And then we've got also the pressure relief valve reset. I will take a couple of minutes, guys, to explain to you that this pressure relief valve reset is such an important uh, function. It's very common in the Bose injection systems to find this pressure relief uh, valve in the injector rail. The problem is, I'm going to use also the system display to see better what I'm talking about. System display, the PRV valve is this one here. So when we've got a uh, high pressure, over pressure in the injector rail, this type of valves will relieve the pressure again to the low pressure side of the fuel injection system. But what's the problem here? The problem comes when mm, we, the electronic control unit detects that the number of cycles, the number of times that this pressure relief valve has been activated during the lifetime of the vehicle has been exceeded. It means that the pressure relief valve must be replaced by a new one. But if we replace the spare part, this uh, pressure relief valve, and we don't say, say the control unit, hey, the spare part, this pressure relief valve has been replaced by a new one, the electronic control unit still believe that the old pressure relief valve remains in the injector rail and we may have a power derate. So that's a very, very important uh, maintenance. If I click in the maintenance pressure relief valve again, it requires expert mode. Here we've got the description and the description says pretty much the same as, as I, I just uh, said to you. And keep in mind that the valve must be replaced and this maintenance reset procedure must be performed to avoid the engine power limitation, the engine power derate. All of this is included in Yaltes, but we need a little bit of time, certain amount of time, a bit of patience until we get into the correct function. That's the number of cycles and also the opening time. If I click on reset, all of these um, counters will be reset and it will be displayed number zero. I'm not going to do that. It's not needed now, but just to let you know. And then we've got the calibration for the accelerator position. As I told you, it's a very complete diagnostic menu. The last thing is the data recorder. That's very interesting for the electromechanics. What we can do here is to select a certain amount of measurements and then we start recording for 30 minutes. Okay, not more, 30 minutes. You can leave the laptop, you can leave your Jaltes device connected into the tractor and then you can give a drive and see the measurements. That's very, very useful to see the fuel injection system, for instance, when I have problems with the fuel pump, with injector rail, with the proportional valve of the fuel pump or the pressure relief valve, it's very interesting to see this function and see how the pressure drops or how the pressure relieves or how the pressure increases every time. Uh, also, very nice to see in vehicle technical data, we need to select the host power. Okay, I'm going to select this one. It's very important to see here. It's included for free in Yaltes, comes with your license. The fuel system, fuel pressure. I see that this engine has a fuel pressure of 
two, maximum fuel pressure of 2000 bars. It means that above this pressure, we will have the pressure relief valve that we talked about before, relieving all this pressure to the low pressure side of the fuel injection system. So it's very interesting that we have all of this information in Jaltes. And not only about the fuel system, but also adjustments, tolerances, dining torques, crank shaft, connecting rod, cylinder head, it's just amazing. Um, all I can find in the service manual regarding with this type of data is already included in Yaldes. And as I told you, it's worth of time to take a few minutes and see if we've got here some updates. Okay. So, also troubleshooting by symptoms, which is also free. And we can see how all of this, um, how all of these troubleshooting guides, step by step. If we find coolant in the flu uh, fluid in the engine oil, if we have engine oil in the coolant fluid, if we have excessive consumption of the engine oil, loss of engine power, a lot of troubleshooting guides, step by step, how to solve all of these problems, just based on symptoms. Mm -hmm. Diagrams, also unbelievable amount of information here, including pictures of every component, like for instance here, electronic control unit, where it is placed. The values, the pinout, sensors, everything here, system technical data, all the components in the diagram are also listed in the system technical data. Amazing. everywhere, locations, everything here. Okay, so I'm going to disconnect. I think that's pretty much what I can show you about this engine system, very complete. And now what I'm going to do is to show you the display system scan OBD. First thing, if, we, if I go to system selection, we're going to see that we have two different display system scans. We've got here with one with OBD and the other one without OBD. That means only that we are going to use the, the OBD diagnostic socket and that's why we've got the OBD one in our system scan. So if I click here and I click in connections, it's, all, it's also the same, it's OBD. If I come back and I do the same with the engine, We've got also OBD, but take into account one, one very interesting thing. We've got here multi-pins option available, but we don't in this system, display system scan. Why we don't have any multi-pins option? Display system scan collects, gather all of the systems like cluster transmission, like the elevator for the hitch and this uh, collection is called display system scan and it uses several communication protocols. It means that we are going to connect using different pins of the OBD socket. Therefore, we cannot use multi-pins because if we use multi-pins, we can only have access to one specific system. And this one, it's a certain amount of systems. So we have different pins. That's why we don't have multi-pins option. Then if I click in connect, we've got a message. I know almost nobody will ever read this message. So let me tell you, this message says mm, the diagnostic device, which is Yaltes in this case, is not used to send diagnostic instructions. It's only used as a display. In other words, we are going to see in the screen of our laptop what says the electronic control unit. But I'm not going to send any request using the interface. I'm going only to use my laptop as a display, as a mirror of these electronic control units. 
Sounds weird, but you're going to see what I'm talking about. After identifying the systems, use the alphanumeric keyboard. What is this? I didn't see any alphanumeric keyboard ever in Yaltes. That's because Deutschfahr has been used for many years like a small keyboard uh, to connect and to get access into these systems. What we done, what we have done, excuse me, is to include this keyboard made by Deutschfahr in our laptop. Now I'm going to click and system shirts. See these meshes. Attention, it's in red color. Switch off the ignition key and wait for 30 seconds before switching it on. That's very, very, very important. Let me tell you, if I don't switch off the ignition for 30 seconds, you know what will happen. Guys, what will happen is we are going to detect only one system or even we are not going to detect nothing. It's what it is. We need a little bit of patience with this type of vehicles from Deutschfahr. So I'm going to give a switch off, ignition off for 30 seconds, and then I'm going to click on accept. There we are. The trick with Deutschfahr um, tractors is to have a little bit of patience. It's the, one of the most uh, important things. Um, always please respect the 30 seconds. It happens to me, I wait only for 10 seconds, I even didn't switch off, and as I told you, it did nothing. And it's not a problem of the diagnostic device, it's not a problem of Yaltes, it's not a problem of the tractor, it's a problem of we didn't read the instructions correctly and we didn't do it correctly. So please pay attention, check out this message, that's why for 30 seconds, we are almost there, and then we're going to give switch on. I think we are ready. There we are. Look, we only detect one system. And here in this tractor, we should have at least three systems. So I need to do it again. That happens in the real life, that happens to me, that happens to everybody. Uh, it's what it is. The electronic architecture of the vehicle is like this, so we need to do it again. Um, clicking in disconnect, switch off again the tractor and wait a couple of minutes. Also, I'm going to take the chance and I'm going to reset the interface just in case. Uh, also, sometimes happens if we, do, if we have done several diagnosis requests trying to connect uh, in a very short period of time, the electronic control unit also sometimes get like a um, little bit locked. We only need to reset, turn the ignition off, wait for a certain amount of uh, seconds or even one, two minutes and do it again. It will work. For sure, it will work. I will keep here in the system display, in the system scan, excuse me, keeping the eyes on this system here. Just uh, give me a couple of seconds and we are done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's try again. Connect. I'm going to need to do another switch off.
clicking accept. And as I told you, now we've got three different electronic control units systems uh, detected in this um, display system scan, which is the rear lift, the instruments cluster, and the smart lever. Well, for the ones who already know how to use Jaltes, uh, you may not see before this type of menu. It's an alphanumeric menu, as I told you, we do exactly the same numeric path we have in the uh, tool from Deutsch, and we need to follow the numbers with the path. So if I want to connect, for instance, in the rear lift, which is number one, I need to click in number one, here we've got same parameters, or E to continue, I want to continue, and here we've got the main menu for this rear lift, for the hitch, and we can perform settings, monitor, test, alarm, list. Also, if we find here, in different languages, <laughs> it's not a problem of Yaltes. Um, Yaltes tells the electronic control unit in which language should be displayed. But if we don't find, if the electronic control unit hasn't got this language, it can be displayed in English, it can be displayed in Italian, and it's a matter of the electronic control unit, not uh, Jaltes itself. So I'm going to click in settings. Here we've got some of the settings, and as you can see, we've got Italian. Um, is the electronic control unit the answer to be displayed? In the electronic control unit, it's in Italian. If I want to come back, I press E, monitor, lifting bar, all the measurements right now in the lifting bar. The draft. And position bar all of these values are a Bible if we want to yeah if we want to come back just press A just following the instructions if we want to perform some test I'm going to click on three sometimes at the very, at the first time the button doesn't work we need to try several times but finally it will work So it's like this um, every time. If we want to come back to one of the rest of the systems, like the instruments cluster or like the transmission, I cannot come back pressing E, 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 E several times. Unfortunately, we need to come back again, disconnect, and then do the system scan again. Not the system scan, the display system scan over the, again. I mean, to do the kick, niching off for 30 seconds, and then select the system we want to connect. Why? Because once we select the system, like this one, uh, for the lift uh, in the rear part, the multiplexing command is using one specific pin. And now, to come back, we only can do it disconnecting. It's what it is. That's why I did this webinar for you, because it could be confusing and the uh, first times we need to get used to this type of uh, layout and also to this type of instructions. Nevertheless, this menu looks very old, but it's still very, very useful for new tractors. In Jaltes, it also include releases and procedures. These releases and procedures for this tractor, for this system, includes how to calibrate many things, like the calibration of the active stop function. Sounds weird, but it has to do with the steering wheel and the amount of um, movement you need to uh, steer the wheel to the left or to the right. So it also can be calibrated and can be adjusted. Also, the Clutch pedal calibration. It's 
step by step how to do it. As you can see, everything is done with this alphanumeric menu. As I told you, it can be confusing, so we did these uh, technical procedures to inform our users how to use it. And the transmission calibration. When we notice that uh, we have a very... Um, uh, the, the transmission is not working smoothly, we need to perform this uh, transmission calibration. And can be done with the Altes, with this menu, just following the instructions, okay? Here we've got some of the information. So, I think you get it. The most important things, guys. Yeah, I can, I can see that there are not so many questions. So I'm going to disconnect and I'm going to do a, a small, uh, I'm going to sum up all of this information. Uh, we've got a small tractor. This is a Deutschfahr 5D. Remember, in the 5D family model, because it's 5100.4D, which means fam, uh, F, uh, excuse me, 5D uh, model. We select the model here, and then we click in System Scan. System Scan gave me two different systems. Engine, which has a very complete uh, diagnostic menu. Most important things, system display, calibrations, accelerator pedal, parameters like the injector modification, the speed, the tie diameter, and also the maintenance. Most important things, we have the hours for the maintenance, we have the pressure relief valve, um, and after uh, we've got also uh, the function to record every measurement. Finally, we've got another one which is called Display System Scan by OBD. Click on here, please always respect the time to switch on, switch off the ignition before do it, because if not, the system scan will not be correctly done. And then you are going to um, see alpha, an alphanumeric layout. This alphanumeric layout is a small pad with numbers of letters. It very, looks very old, but uh, these uh, models still work with this, um, with this way. And we've got plenty of releases and procedures, how to calibrate using this menu. We've got here in this model three different systems inside display system scan, which was um, instruments cluster, the rear lift, and also the transmission. Plenty of calibrations, parameters, measurements, all of this information under this system, okay? I really hope that this information has been uh, profitable for you. And for the next times, you are ready to perform diagnosis correctly in Deutsch Farm models. Let's go now to the second part of, a practical, of this practical part. We are going to see how to perform diagnosis in the connector with the multimeter and see if the communication lines, power supply lines are correct or not. Let's go. So now I'm going to disconnect the diagnosis device, the diagnosis interface. And go leave it here. Because for this practical case, the second part of the practical case, I'm not going to use it. What I'm going to use is the multimeter, some uh, multipins, um, multipins from our Jaltes kit, which is very useful and one lamp to check out the diagnosis connector and that's all pretty much. So what's the goal of this practical case? The goal is to know if the voltage levels of the can lines are correct, if the power supply of the OBD socket are correct, and also I'm going to check out if we find any other uh, pin in this uh, diagnostic socket. Okay, so 
I'm going to use, as I told you, the multimeter. Mm -hmm. Normally, we are going to have from 0 to 12 volts. Talking about the count lines, we are going to have from 0 to 5 volts. Now rates of 2.5, 2.7, depending if it's can high, can low. For power supply from 0 to 12, depending if it's ground or, or positive. And then we maybe find some uh, K-line uh, pins. K, K, K and L, it's uh, another communication protocol and also can be, we can figure out if it's there using the multimeter. Okay, so I'm going to set my multimeter. I'm going to select voltage, I'm going to select continuous current, and now it's in outer range, which for me it's good, and I'm going to set the light, because now in the cabin it's a bit, little bit dark, and yes, positive for voltage, V for voltage, and COM for ground, which is correct, yes. And I've got here in my one of my pockets. No, maybe I don't remember where I left my pins. Maybe here in the. No, they are not there. So be in the cabin. Okay, so I'm going to leave here the multimeter. If not, what I'm going to do is, yeah, here, yeah. in my pocket, those are multi-pins, uh, they are already included in our gel test uh, kit and sweep perfectly in the pinhole of our diagnostic socket. So the first thing is to figure out which are um, the pinout which are the positive and the negative of our OBD socket. Um, I'm going to use blue for ground and I'm going to use the yellow for the positive power supply. Um, taking one of these lamps, if you can see here, the diagnostic socket has very, very small numbers. 1 to 16. 1 is here and 16 is there. That's very important because we need to know the order. If we know the order, most of the times the diagnostic socket follows the, the norm and four and five are for ground and number 16 is for um, positive. Better like this. So I'm going to use the blue one for ground and the yellow one for positive. Now it's in onto range. As you can see, the multimeter says we've got 12.2, sorry, 12.2 volts. That means that the power supply in the diagnostic socket is correct. Okay, so that's perfect. Now what I'm going to do is leave the blue one in pin number five. Four and five are both for ground, so it's good for me. I'm going to leave it there, and I'm going to use the yellow one to see can high and can low. Can high normally is in pin number six in the OBD socket, and pin number 14 normally is can low. So I'm going to place my yellow multipin in number six. I, I expect to have around 2.7, 2.8 volts. So I'm going to place ground here. I'm going to place positive here. There is nothing, and that's because we have ignition off. 
now it's on and as you can see we've got an average of 2.57 2.56 if I move this yellow one that was previously in number 6 now it's going to be moved to number 14 we've got Canlo and as you can see Canlo has moment 2.10 so there is a difference from can high to can low there is a difference of almost 0 0.5 that's this offset from can high to can low it's the normal one okay if we measure from can high to can low we have this voltage difference which is half a volt more or less 0 0.5 if we measure 6 which is can high to ground, we've got 2.57 and 14, which is can low, 2.1 comparing to ground so that means uh, can lines in terms of voltage level, it's okay if we find that can lines after switching on uh, are not in this voltage level and it's in an upper level we may have a shortcut to positive in one of the communication lines, communication wires, we, we, we have a uh, shortcut to positive. If it's uh, close to zero, we may have a shortcut to negative or maybe an open circuit or maybe the worst case we've got the uh, CAN driver uh, faulty, but that's not very common. Yeah. Okay, the next thing, and just for curiosity, my curiosity, I would like to check if we've got some K line. Normally, the K line has around 70% of the battery voltage. If we are in 12 volts, you can figure out that it's somewhere around 7 to 9 volts, more or less. So let's check if taking the ground and taking our positive we see these voltages in one of the pins see this one this is uh, in pin number one and we've got uh, 9 volts normally this voltage level will indicate a K line in this type of vehicles mm -hmm. then we have another type of protocols but in this vehicle we are going to find only K line and um, CAN lines CAN lines for the engine and K line for some of the um, systems we detected uh, in, the, in, the, in the display system scan OBD so as I told you keep in mind these voltage levels and um, for future um, problems if we have uh, during the connection 004 voltage problem in the previous uh, webinar we see how to solve it and also take into account these advices these tips because it can be also very nice to solve problems and to perform diagnosis um, here we have uh, more or less our webinar guys I really hope um, you like it um, as I told you several times um, during our webinars uh, we are going to see more and more webinars regarding with uh, construction machinery agricultural commercial vehicles and trips like uh, tips and tricks like these ones my suggestion is if you have the time and the chance to, de to see these webinars even if your workshop has nothing to do with agriculture or has nothing to do with uh, commercial vehicles some of the tricks like this one checking out the voltage in the OBD socket are very good and suitable for all type of vehicles so you are always more than welcome to join our webinars and um, uh, the last thing is some of the questions that I didn't have enough time to, to solve during the webinar will be answered like in previous webinars uh, during the next week okay 
uh, by email and uh, also you can find me in social networks or or by email you already have also my email so feel free to contact us whenever you need and hope to see you in in next webinars thank you very much for watching see you later